So praise God that we can, we have this opportunity, the three of us, to sing with Him. So in the song, yeah, amen. And the song that we're going to sing is uh, a song by Josh Groban, You Raise Me Up. And if you want to relate this to, uh, to our lives, actually is uh, God raise us up. You know, every time that you will trust Him, He's there. You know, you can do all things through Him who strengthens us. So we wanted to dedicate this song to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. this be a proof that life on earth is not as Macbeth news. A walking shadow, a poor player that is struts and pressed, his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. A tale told by an idiot 
pulop saun ni puri signify nothing. But as Henry Wadsworth Longfellow puts it, life is real and life is earnest and the grave is not its goal. Thus thou art to thus return was not spoken of the soul. Indeed, there is something more to life, more than what meets the eye, that life on earth is but a preface to what lies beyond. As I walk with God, I know each step that I take makes me see more clearly what life is all about. Life is a gift from God for us to enjoy, as beautifully stated in the historic Westminster Confession. The chief end of life is to know God and enjoy Him forever. This is what the founder of Faith Bible Congregation have written in his life story. Nene Ramientos, Glendale, California, USA from May to December 2009. Aradux and Reflections So when uh, he wrote this uh, his life story, he wrote here, I am now going 80, 81 years of my earthly sojourn. As I look back to some 58 years in the service of God, I see that life is not a mere evanescent dream, as Shakespeare wrote in Macbeth, that it is not like chasing rainbows, as Judy Garland loved to sing her favorite song, nor it's a matter of chance and fate, as Doris Day sang a popular song, Que sera sera, what will be, be will be. But life is an earnest reality. In Longfellow, beautifully praise it in his award-winning psalm of life. To live is to, to the full. One must first discover the fountain of life. Like the woman of Samaria, found it by the well of Sikar. There by the well, Jesus was waiting for her. She built her water pot no longer with water of the well, but by the living water Jesus offered her. My life is a reflection of that story. The invitation came when I was teaching evangelism and Christian journalism at the Haggai Institute for Advanced Leadership Training in Singapore in 1971. I was with Haggai Institute for one month a year for about 10 consecutive years. The students were pastors, church leaders, business executives, and community leaders mostly from the third world. At about this time, I was in installed bishop of the Federation of Christian Churches of the Philippines. It is an indigenous association of independent evangelical churches in Metro Manila, Mindanao, Bicol, Visaya, and Mindanao. My association with Hagai Institute opened up for me several opportunities to preach in various countries including Singapore, India, and Australia. But it was with a bright tiding international when I had many more opportunities to preach the Word of God in several other countries, including 
those in the Western Hemisphere. Most of the time, I preach and taught in the Bright Tiding Home based in countries of Indonesia and Netherlands. The Bears BTI Boring Crusade A high point in my Indonesian ministry was the Manila Crusade sometime in the late 80s. It was the first time the Bright Tiding Indonesia held a crusade outside their country. I was tasked to serve as an interpreter. In the opening night of the crusade was memorable. Standing by the side of Pastor In Juwono, founder and the first pastor of the Church of the Good Shepherd in Johor, Surabaya, Indonesia. I freely spoke in English as if I was interpreting Juwono's opening message, much more to the, much more to the amazement of many in the crowd. But what they heard was not an interpretation of the message. It was an amplification of the message interpreted to me through a thin cord connected to my earphone. That was my personal innovation. At the eye of the Manila Crusade, I had Hana interpreter Juno's message line by line. Hana was a, pa a past interpreter. She would finish interpreting before Juwono could even finish his line. His familiarity with her pastor message also added to her proficiency in interpreting, interpreting her pastor's messages. So came the opening night of the Manila Crusade. I was the amplifier and Hannah was hidden interpreter speaking through a tin cord to my earphone. As amplifier, I elaborated on the messages with words facing new challenges. I was flabbergasted. I had never yet spoken in a town plaza, let alone on an occasion to celebrate a national day. I was aware the entire official dome and other big weeks of the community would be there. The whole plaza would be filled with townspeople. But I took it as a providential act of God to trust down a rumor spread by a local leader of the dominant religion in the town. He had spread the word in our barrio that I was ignorant and dumb in English. July 4 came and thousands were gathered at the town plaza. After Judge Juan Palermo introduced me and I delivered my speech several times, I was interrupted by the enthusiastic applause from the crowd and Judge Palermo was visibly pleased at what he saw and heard. We became personal friends after that event. He often invited me to his home in the town just to chat with me. And the word spread in the Bible that the town justice of the peace and the barrio pastor were personal friends. Since then, there was no more word from the religious leader. More people came to our church and some came from the town and nearby barrios. Uh, the situation looked like the same when we were harassed by the corporate 
people. Okay, when we are forced to vacate the property, the total taking over of the property that the congregation paid for and protected. And the corporate people considered all the people living in the property of the Sambali for a square church that paid and protected it for so many years that belongs to God, our liabilities. And we were even branded homeless people, delusional and even mentally deranged. And the worst thing that they did to me, they even fabricated the unlawful detainer, the eviction case. That Chong Torres is really man that is triangulation. Okay? You are getting a lot of information first before you're going to do something in bad faith. Your action are always in bad faith. And we are so ignorant that we trusted these people from the corporation giving all the information that they want. And we speak the truth. But these people lies. Well, he even wrote to the email that he sent to Noni Abo that hmm, John Torres, oh my God, I don't know if, man, I will be 64 years old by 2021. What you have done to me, God also will do it to you. 1995, they were able to buy a property located at 12055 Wick Street, Sambali, California. This is a four acres property. And there are two titles of this property. The residential property and the vacant lot. And then 1997, they became a chartered church of Port Square from independent church that was founded by Reverend Bishop Dr. Eustachio Ramientos Jr. 1985 when it was founded and then 2015 it was dissolved. This is not right. Because the only way that we will be dissolved because there's no way because our property become now we are now part of the organization and there is no reason for these two pastors that is licensed by the poor square to dissolve us chong torres and jeff nelson for not tithing to the denomination oh my god that is not a good reason the Global Foursquare Church is a movement comprised of local church congregations around the world who share a common mission and message. This movement began with a single church in 1923 and has spread to over 140 countries around the globe. In the United States, the Foursquare Church was incorporated in 1927 and ultimately implemented a modified Episcopal governance and shared ownership of property under a single religious nonprofit corporation. Historically, there have been many benefits to this structure, since shared ownership of property has ultimately provided a strong asset base for the domination. And because of that, for several decades, many local churches have been able to acquire, construct, or renovate church properties that may not have been possible without the strength of our combined asset portfolio. And this has resulted in huge savings over the years. However, these benefits also come with a cost and a shared responsibility. Purchasing, constructing, or renovating facilities results in added financial obligations like maintenance, insurance coverage, and other responsibilities that come with the territory when you own property. 
This structure also necessitates very thorough processes for vetting property-related decisions to ensure that each local congregation can sustain the obligations of property ownership so that the property doesn't become a liability that negatively impacts the local church or the Foursquare family as a whole. In many cases, this need for thorough vetting and review of numerous and often simultaneous property decisions around the nation can feel bureaucratic and unintentionally impede the goals of a local congregation. So in 2013, our movement began investigating alternative structures for property ownership that would empower the local church to control its property decisions while the Foursquare denomination retains authority for the polity of the church. In 2016, a historic decision was made by the Foursquare family when the convention body voted to amend our bylaws to provide a new option for property ownership at the local church level. Today, local Foursquare churches can operate under either of two models with respect to property ownership. The first is Foursquare's traditional model of ownership known as a Foursquare Charter Church. The Foursquare bylaws describe a charter church as a church established and chartered by International Church of the Foursquare Gospel as a local Foursquare Church, or a church not previously established by International Church of the Foursquare Gospel, which is elected to become a local Foursquare Church, having no legal existence, articles of incorporation, bylaws, or other organizing documents apart from those of the International Church of the Foursquare Gospel and which has transferred title to all of its property into the name of International Church of the Foursquare Gospel with no possibility of reversion unless specifically agreed to by the board. In essence, the Foursquare denomination is comprised of individual congregations who are all linked together under a single corporate entity and share responsibility for all property. Much like these train cars are each distinct in their form and function, yet they comprise a single train with the same destination, cargo, and track. In this example, the track would represent the Foursquare Bylaws, the governance document that keeps us all moving in the same direction. Since Foursquare Charter Churches are all linked together into a single train, whatever happens to one car ultimately impacts the entire train. The second and new option for property ownership is called a Foursquare Covenant Church. The Foursquare Bylaws describe a covenant church as a local church previously established by the International Church of the Foursquare Gospel that has elected, with board approval, to have a legal existence apart from that of the International Church of the Foursquare Gospel and to affiliate with the International Church of the Foursquare Gospel by mutual agreement in a covenant relationship. Or a local church not previously established by or associated with the International Church of the Foursquare Gospel that is a separate legal entity that has elected to affiliate with the International Church of the Foursquare Gospel by mutual agreement in a covenant relationship, which obligates the local church to operate by the bylaws of the International Church of the Foursquare Gospel with the rights and duties pertaining thereto. In the case of a covenant church, this is a separate legal entity. Yet there remains a binding connection with the Foursquare denomination by virtue of the covenant agreement, which is executed by the boards of both the local church corporation and the Foursquare corporation. Under this arrangement, the local church agrees to be governed by Foursquare's bylaws and policies, but retains individual responsibility and authority over decisions concerning church property. Using the train illustration, the covenant agreement enables a local church to operate as a separate train using the same track, thus allowing an independent church corporation to operate as a Foursquare church and in accordance with Foursquare bylaws. Under this covenant arrangement, either party may terminate by following the prescribed process, but in doing so, the covenant church will discontinue its membership in the Foursquare denomination. So how does a Foursquare covenant church differ from the historical model known as a Foursquare Charter Church. This diagram illustrates a side-by-side -side comparison of these two models. As you can see, the only differences between a Foursquare Charter and Covenant Church relate to the decisions concerning the operation of local church property and related obligations such as insurance and internal Foursquare loans. But when it comes to the organizational structure, access to resources, or responsibility for commitments such as monthly reporting and extension tithe, a Foursquare Covenant Church will operate in every way as a Foursquare Church. Covenant Church leaders will enjoy all the benefits of being part of the Foursquare movement, 
and will have full access to services like district events, community, and care, Foursquare Retirement, the Center for Spiritual Renewal, and credentialing services. And although Covenant Churches are organized as separate corporations, leaders will still have full access to all Foursquare departments for consultation on issues like property, insurance, administration, plan giving, retirement, and legal issues. At the end of the day, the only real differences between a Covenant and Charter Foursquare Church is that, for legal reasons, Covenant Churches are not able to participate in the Foursquare Insurance Program, but our amazing team is fully available to assist with consultation in obtaining a comparable insurance policy from a different provider. And although Covenant Churches will not be able to participate in internal ICFG loans, they are welcomed and encouraged to contact Foursquare Financial Solutions to apply for an FFS loan as needs arise. As you can see, this arrangement has been carefully crafted to provide options for property ownership while maintaining all of the important elements that make it such a benefit to belong to a family like Foursquare. So now let's take a moment to review the process required to become a Foursquare Covenant Church. For current Foursquare churches, the first step is to establish a local nonprofit corporation to serve as the legal entity that will hold title to church property. This corporation will need to have officers as well as a board of directors, who will ultimately play a comparable role to that of the Foursquare Church Council. In order to establish a corporation, you will most likely need to get assistance from a professional to draft incorporation documents, and the district offices can provide a referral to vendors who have been pre-screened and already understand what documents are needed. Existing independent churches that want to join Foursquare probably already have a corporation in place, but it's also important to note that the senior pastor of any charter or covenant Foursquare church must hold an active Foursquare minister's credential. If this is not already in place, you can initiate this process through your local district office. The next step is for our district and central office teams to perform a cursory review of the incorporation documents and a few other important pieces of information that will be needed to ensure that everything's in place to proceed with the covenant agreement. Then it will be time to ratify and sign the covenant agreement, and this begins by a vote of the local church congregation and requires a three-fourths majority of the regular attenders to attest that they are in support of this agreement. This will be verified by the local church board members who will be asked to sign the covenant agreement and confirm that this decision was ratified by a three-fourths majority of the congregation. From there, the signed agreement will go to the Foursquare Board of Directors for a board resolution so that the covenant may be signed by a Foursquare corporate officer and then the covenant agreement is complete. From that point forward, the church can begin to operate as a full-fledged Foursquare church with the local church maintaining authority and responsibility for any decisions to buy, sell, lease, or renovate newly acquired property in accordance with Foursquare's policies and bylaws. We hope that this video has provided a helpful orientation to both the purpose and the process behind the Foursquare Covenant Church model and pray that this important step opens the door wide to churches and ministers who want to join the Foursquare family in our shared mission to spread the gospel message around the world. My first ministry to be part of the church body is the worldwide evangelism. This is the Bible study of the different pastors that they're having a Bible study every morning. And this Bible study is among the pastors. So the one that is attending this Bible study are the pastors of our, uh, those renting in our church to see to it if they really as uh, they are really sharing the Word of God. We will know in their Bible study. Amen to that. Church is a very important organization or group or assembly on earth. In fact, the Bible says it's the most powerful assembly on earth. But the church is not like that only. The church receives a lot of attacks. It's like forces in the midst of battle that we need to really pray 
and we are fighting against those who disrupt peace on earth. We have a different purpose for our lives. God gave us the Holy Spirit after we received our Lord Jesus Christ in the moment that we ask for forgiveness of our sins through his sacrifice on the cross. And he gave us the Holy Spirit to guide us to all knowledge and to all truth. That is the key of Christianity. The purpose of coming not only to be saved, but to learn how to please God and to learn how we conduct our lives in this world, we are in this world. But without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he who comes to God must believe that He is. It takes faith. You cannot come to God and be a faithless person. Let me use this illustration. There was a little boy who was told by an atheist teacher, take your fist, clench it, and shake it at the heavens, because there is no God. And the boy said, no. And the teacher said, why? Don't your parents teach you how to follow authority? I gave you instruction. You should follow my order. And the boy said, well, sir, if I clench my face and shake it at God, if he is there, he will be mad. But if he is not there, why, I would look silly. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Yes, with the singing. Know that the Lord, he is good and he is God. Jesus Christ was sacrificed as a lamb. Why he and why he alone? Because he is the only one worthy to be sacrificed. He is the only one that is holy and acceptable before God. It is the privilege of the Christian person to know and understand these things. In other words, the Lord doesn't want that you continue being a baby in Him. You have to have a process where you're going to become mature. Mature means that you have come to the state of producing something. Mature means that you are going to begin to take the right decisions in spite of the circumstances that surround you. We are limited and we don't see things ahead. You see, sometimes you are delayed because there must be something that God is protecting you in an event that would happen that might hurt you. And if it is not God's will for you to be hurt yet, you know, or to be with Him yet, so to speak, it will not happen. It is always according to His will. So it's very important that you submit to that rule that God wants to implement in your life and in the lives of other people. Tell you how. If you want to be with Jesus, if you want to have a relationship with Jesus, you can do it by prayer, by asking from your own self-will. And that prayer goes like this, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior and my Lord. Take control of the throne of my life. Give me eternal life, give me forgiveness of sin, and make me the kind of person you want me to be. If you hear that small, sweet voice, because God is never going to yell at you. It's not going to be in this loud, threatening voice, you know, that loud, booming, whoa, no. If you feel that, that gentle calling, that small, sweet voice, talking to you, saying, today is the time to be saved, can I ask you to pray that prayer with me? Those of you that are watching us, those of you that have heard this lesson and have changed over the ministry of this church as we have gone and delivered the message to you, as you are maturing every day, and I know you are, as you, if you are looking at our word, if you are looking at our ministry, you are maturing every day. Can you pray also for these other people that do not know Jesus? Can you be part of that? Can our, that be our partnership in this ministry? And so those of you that don't know Jesus, the first time you're asking Jesus to come, can I ask you to pray today because the day and time to be saved is now. Can we pray together? Can we pray together now? Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior and my Lord. Take control of the throne of my life. Give me eternal life. Give me the forgiveness of sin. And make me the kind of person you want me to be. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 
it's good I was able to take this video. This is the progress report, financial and the progress of all the repairs and major construction that we are doing in the chapel and in the fellowship hall. And as what uh, Brother Barry Press is discussing, there are almost 10 churches, independent churches, that are willing to be part of the organization that are renting our property. This is one of the assets of the congregation, the Paul Acres property and the fellowship hall and that small chapel that we have. As 2014, we are the one paying the property tax, our insurance, and even the salary of the pastor that the Paul Square license. It's all coming from us. Everything, even the repairs, maintenance of the property. And then there's even a sum profit that was reported. So we're making almost more than $100,000 every year. And now, when he took over, I don't know now what happened, because right now, as you can see, we lost a lot of money already. So after five years, this is really a very good comparison. Uh, when the corporation took over our property, and when we are the one running our property, and we're the one running, the dog that you can hear barking is uh, the border collie Bella. Uh, this dog, man, even this dog was able to learn about what really is the Christianity is all about, because they are with me for the past three years hearing the word of God. The Bible study of the pastors, this dog, Bella, the border collie, and Yuki, the chihuahua, man, they're always with me, and sometimes they're staring at the pastor, and, you know, the pastor is not even comfortable, because as if they are listening to them. Uh, because the dog, man, is always with me, even the Bible study of the pastor, even in the school, they are attending. So sometimes the pastor is not even comfortable because the dog, my dog, is looking at them as if uh, listening to them. But for a while, now they are now uh, used to it. So my dog also got used to it. And now everybody got used to it. The thing that I'm going to share to you is about history. As what you can see here in my t-shirt, maybe I'm out in my <laughs> because in the book of 2 Corinthians, anything that you do for God, they will say, you are out of your mind. Because there's something there that you're doing that really people will say, you're really crazy. Since years, I have seen some prophecy or vision that we made uh, that's four years ago with Pastor Hector and uh, former Pastor Noni. Mm -hmm. That, uh, you know, this church, uh, four years ago, is not like this. Then we have this kind, and, and, and then the members of the church may be 20 or 30. And sometimes uh, the praise and worship is already there. You're going to see, and somebody asked me, where are the people? Where are the only people here? <laughs> and uh, I've seen Pastor Hector, now he's traveling. And then he asked me if I can uh, stay in his church for a while, just to watch the property, because it is vandalized. There's some graffiti, there's some places there, and we're throwing a lot of, you know, a lot of things over there. And, uh, he told, and it took me uh, a month to decide, so I, I just slipped in my car, and Pastor Hector told me, come on, go inside, no, no, just sleep in my car, for a month, that's winter time, and uh, rather uh, don't know him. And then I decided, because I don't want to, you know, take a 
bad days or something with their offering. So I just endured the winter time in school. And the pastor had to say, okay, after, after a month, I decided, okay, maybe I can uh, stay in this church because I want also to know God in Jesus Christ. Because I was raised in a Catholic family because in the Philippines, we are all Catholic, 90%. And then I still remember my mother bringing me in the church. That's my first exposure. And then I became an altar boy. When I graduated from elementary, my father decided that I would go in the seminary, minor seminary. Because uh, he thinks I'm going to become a priest. <laughs> you know, to become a priest, Catholic priest, it would take you a long time. If you start from a uh, high school. I think it would take 12 years of study. And as here, it would take us only, what, three years, three hours, two days, and, you, and finally, you might become a pastor. Mm -hmm. And to become a priest, it would take you 12 years. That's a long, and you will be staying in the seminary. You see? It's like the, uh, and it's also expensive. But everybody can go to the seminary because, you know, you have to pay a lot of money. Because the board and lighting and everything. Anyway, uh, when I uh, finished my uh, minor seminary, we started 16 and graduated 12 and Rodney became a priest actually in my uh, class. But some become a pastor, some become uh, active in their churches. And now, uh, maybe I became doorman for a long time, and now I'm active here in this church, uh, trying to help whatever I can help. And then, uh, I have this kind of vision also, that, uh, because there's something that I'm doing, because this is, uh, you know, United States is what we call the land of opportunity. You make it here, something you do, you're made. Then I have something that I'm doing, that uh, until now I'm still wondering to our Lord, what, what, why are you holding me still here? Like, you know, suffering, this and that. But however, uh, when reading the Bible, because I became dormant for a long time, it's only lately that I started reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to share something in the Justice chapter 3 that it says here, to everything, there is a season and time to every purpose under heaven. So everybody here in this class has a purpose Amen. Amen. under heaven. Amen. Because everybody is unique. Maybe you're good in preaching. Maybe you're good on something. My gift is different. I can make something out of something. So, Actually, when I, I started uh, really committing myself, I even made that, you know, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Over there. Oh. Yeah. Church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I hardly did. Mm -hmm. Then, I made a cross. And everybody seemed to love him, and I try, I'm starting to make it. So, what am I doing? I'm making a cross. What cross is not cross? No. I crucify her. <laughs> It's a big one. So anyway, so that's 2008. And then uh, one thing also that I uh, really love in this place is on a small congregation. And then it's paid off. We don't have any neighbors that's really going to bother you. So I started living in the airstream, doing some research work. I love it because nobody's bothering me and they think I'm crazy. So anyway, uh, to make the story short, uh, I started also attending the school because I want to learn something. Mm -hmm. How the church uh, works, what is this they're talking about. So, by being dormant for a long time, I started to know Jesus because when Pastor Hector uh, asked me to receive Jesus Christ in 2008, he said, you know what? When I, uh, uh, when I uh, pray, pray that you're going to see Jesus Christ, 
I don't feel anything. And I told him the same to you also. I did not feel anything. <laughs> See? Because maybe the seed is there. But you need nourishment to germinate it, to grow little by little. It's not, it's not I pray for you, you receive it already. It's not. You have to work for your salvation. You let it grow. You have to nourish it to be spiritual. Amen. And we have an awesome God. Amen. <laughs> you, to pray. you see? Because the reason that I'm going to say that we have an awesome God, God, I mean Jesus Christ. You know, there's, 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 uh, when Jesus Christ was uh, crucified, there's two guys with him. And one said to him, Remember me. And say, Okay, to your kingdom. You know what he asked? Just to be remembered. But this has seen his heart. How sincere he is. His faith. And what he said? Jesus said to him, Today, you will be in paradise. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. In the second coming of Jesus Christ, the last judgment, everybody will be resurrected. And then now, what God will see in you once the center of your life is already Jesus Christ and you forget all about the old you, okay? Wherein, that is the sinner. And then, once you have shown humidity and having a fellowship, loving your fellow man, when we will be resurrected, you will be immediately transformed to another body. And once you face God the Father, what God will see is the Son with you. Okay? And you will be immediately be welcome in the kingdom of God. Amen? Simple. And the video I made about, that, uh, about the cross, you will see Pastor Ephraim Reverend Epre Emmanuel and Brother Noni Abo. I mean, they are in front of the pulpit praying because of the heavy burden that we are facing. Because really, the church is a mess. Reverend Pastor Dr. Uh, Epre Emmanuel, the founder of GSDO, Jesus Supreme Global Outreach. Man, I have seen how he endured. And he already joined our Creator. And he died while Noni Abu, my spiritual brother, is bringing him in the elevator, going to the emergency. He died inside the elevator where he took his last breath. And, past, and Noni Abu is with him. And then I'm the one left, actually. The reason, even Noni, man, because of his family. So I said, Noni, take care of of your family. At least me. I'm alone here in America. My family is back in the Philippines. And, you know, I know my, my, my uh, wife is taking care also of my daughter. She's a Christian. And 2014, I'm already preparing my normal life. And then, 2015, this nightmare happened when the corporate pastor came over. I cannot believe what they did to that congregation and to me and even Barry. But they will be accountable in whatever they did because it's also it's stated also under the Polish Square in their handbook regarding the ministerial liability. And they even put there how much the insurance will pay for every wrongdoing. And I don't even I cannot even imagine how these two men, Jeff Nelson, 30 years had been with the Polish Square, 
and I don't know about John Torres. And still, they did that. I don't know what they're going to, what will happen to them, and bless them. One of the favorite songs of Bishop Eustachio, a.k.a. René Ramientos Jr., is the old Rugged Cross. Far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I cherish the old rugged cross till my true. When I was able to uh, talk to uh, Chong Torres through phone, when I went to the central office where I met uh, Tim Baskin, uh, one uh, of the pastor of uh, Forest Square, who was taking care also of the uh, property when I uh, introduced myself to him, that I am the property custodian of the Sambali Forest Square Church and we have a problem that should be addressed immediately. So I discussed it uh, to him and then uh, show him my uh, driver's license, so he check it, uh, the address, 
and uh, I told him that uh, there is a legal uh, there there is a legal uh, liability Minister, ministerial liability should be should be taken care of because uh, there is an imminent event that will happen because uh, Hector now is bullying this uh, uh, young teenager and also uh, the uh, salary of the instructor of the uh, Bible school are delayed. So we have to address it and his, uh, about his character and about the finances of the church. So he gave me the uh, telephone number of Chong Torres and when I called Chong Torres uh, cell phone, uh, he told me that he is in the middle of the burial ceremony of his grandmother. So I was uh, even uh, even saying that uh, I feel so sorry for your loss. And anyway, uh, he will be as uh, she will be in heaven. And I'm even not comfortable talking to him because it's uh, the last uh, uh, time that you are going to see your uh, grandmother and uh, the respect. So I told him that uh, I'll call you later, but he insisted. Anyway because I know what is a burial ceremony, because when I took, uh, I'm a videographer, and I took that video of Sister Penny, Pelly, uh, and this is the video. When I was asked by my brother, Nap Caballero, if I can uh, do the video for uh, his wife, Sister Pelic Caballero, I told him that the funeral, uh, sir, a funeral uh, video is a hard one. That is the reason that uh, they uh, hire a professional videographer. So I told Nap, I cannot guarantee you if I can really give uh, something there that is so solemn that. Uh, I will try, but uh, I advise him to uh, get a professional videographer because this one is the most hardest one to honoring the family, respect to your, uh, it's like honoring your father and mother. That's the way we are, the Filipinos. We give proper burial to our family. And this is the hardest one that you have uh, for a big job over to do. And then, Chong Torres, when he told me about the burial ceremony, he is in the middle. Men, I don't want to, you know, that's the last moment. However, I don't know if he's lying, if he's telling the truth. So I believe in him that he will be honoring also what he told me. But however, what happened is, they confined me and isolated me in that video room wherein I don't even have to communicate to anybody. So that is the reason also that the congregation man was not able even to help me because of this uh, kind of governance that this uh, forest square have. This is the modified Episcopal kind of government that man, if the pastor is going to use that authority, man, Nothing, even Barry, he's a council, cannot do anything because of that authority, and he is a witness on that. My golly. Well, uh, actually, uh, I am now uh, doing this recording because of our anniversary of the Faith Bible uh, Congregation. 2020 will be our 35th anniversary. And uh, really, they erase us. The Faith Bible Church doesn't exist no more. And amen to them. And it will be even better because we're going to, re it will be reborn again.